Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a flying geese border. And we're going to take the scraps and make a really fun cornerstone block. So let's get started. I've made a sketch of what I'm thinking of. So I've got my flying geese in the middle of each side of the quilt. And the cornerstones, of course, are going to be in the corners. So I have some practice ones started here. So I'm thinking of doing a section of flying geese and then just some plain border that's the same as the background and then the cornerstones. But the first thing I need is I need a quilt to go in the middle here. So we're going to go grab some patchwork and see what kind of quilt we can make to make this border look really awesome. patchwork blocks made here. So these are from a kit that my husband Matt cut out and it's Kansas Troubles Civil War style fabrics and it's it's a style that we call scrappy happy. So I've got about 55 different prints in here. It's really nice because that'll give us a big variety of fabrics to pick from to do the flying geese. So I'm not going to lay out the whole quilt but I just want to give you an idea of what borders are gonna go up next to what. This is not the whole quilt, but this gives me enough of the color so I can pick my borders. Now on a log cabin, a lot of times I will do three borders. So these fabrics over here, this is what I would probably do if I wasn't doing a patchwork border. I would do maybe a three inch of the burgundy and then maybe a two inch of this light and about a five inch of this beautiful green print. But for this quilt, I'm going to, instead of doing this light border here, that's where we're going to put the flying geese border. So I'm still going to put a small dark red or burgundy all the way around, but then after that, so that will continue down here a little bit. After that, we're going to put the flying geese and we're going to center it up in the middle here and then we are going to take one of these really nice cornerstones and put it down here. And the other one's going to go way up there with the little burgundy extending and a little bit of this here. Now, the nice thing about having this non-patchwork portion is it makes it really, really easy to fit your border onto your quilt. So we will put the burgundy on and then we will measure exactly how long it is. And that is how long this border needs to be. So we'll just sew a longer piece onto the flying geese part and then line it up and cut off the excess. I've picked five fabrics for the flying geese. I picked these ones out of the colors that I'm using in the patchwork because it's kind of representative of all the dark colors that are in there. Now for the flying geese we only need two sizes of pieces. We need this one which is five by two and three quarters and then we need some squares and they're just two and three quarters inches square. That's all we need. I'm going to do eight geese on the two longer sides of the quilt and I'm gonna do seven on the top and bottom. So that means I'm gonna need a total of 30 of these rectangles. I'm also gonna need 60 of these squares because we need two squares for the corners here. Now on the back of each square we need to make two lines. So we need to mark right across the diagonal and that's really the only line we need for the flying geese but we're going to make the cornerstone so we need to draw another line a half inch away. So we're going to sew along both of those lines. We are going to take this 
on top of here. They line up exactly. We're going to stitch there, and then we're going to stitch there, and then we're going to cut right across the middle. This will get opened up. Then we're going to do the same thing on the other side, and that's how we get our geese. So I'm going to take 60 of these guys, and I'm going to draw on the back of them. I'm going to line this up in the corner, and I'm going to stitch right on my drawn line. I'm going to chain piece these because it goes really fast that way, so I'm going to just do this whole section all at once. Now we are just going to take this off and leave it all strung together, and we are going to sew on the next line. Now I'm going to snip these apart and take them over to the ironing board. I usually work with four blocks at a time here and I like to iron them flat first. It just relaxes any puckeriness that comes from stitching. Now we are going to fold this over. It's folding over right on that seam line and then we are going to iron it. A little bit of steam keeps it in place. Now we are going to open that up. I don't know if you can see my two stitching lines there because I used light colored thread, but we're going to cut right down the middle and I just use a pair of sharp scissors. So we're going to set these in one stack and these in another stack because these are the ones we're going to use for the cornerstones. Now we're going to stitch the square onto this side so we'll get that corner over there in the light. Now this piece goes on this corner here. We're going to stitch there. You always want to make sure before you get started that it's laying on there the way that you want it to go. So this is going to go in this corner here and I'm just going to turn it around and stitch like that. So before I start I'm going to take my whole stack and face them the same way and I'm going to face these with the lines going like this because that'll make it easier to pick them up and not get confused as I'm sewing. So again, just stitch right on your drawn line. Now we'll just stitch down the second lines. Now we're going to flatten these out again and then open it up right on that stitching line. Your corners will meet up right here. Now they're starting to look like what we want them to look like. We're going to cut off these just like we did on the first half. So that's the finished goose, I suppose you would call it there. So just put all of those aside there. These are what's going to be in the middle and then we're going to make the cornerstone. This is the order I'm going to do this section of flying geese in. So we're going to take this piece here and this one here and we are going to stitch right along here. And it's easiest if you stitch with this piece up because we want to use a quarter inch seam but we want to hit that intersection right there. We don't want to go over the point and we don't want to be out here. We want to stitch right to that point. So if you go slow and careful there, you can see we've got a nice point right there. Now we'll just take the next piece. It goes the same way. So they sew together really fast and you can see exactly where you're sewing. You can get that point every time. So we want to iron this nice and flat. Now usually when you're doing patchwork like this, the seam allowances want to go one way or the other. These ones, it's a little bit easier to make them go away from the point. So I just find it easier to pull this whole thing back like this and just do a little finger pressing before I iron so that I can keep it straight. And these edges, they want to go the other way. So you just have to kind of feel which way your seam allowance is going 
and then iron it. That way it'll stay nice and flat and you won't have to flip it back and forth and back and forth. So I'm not using steam right now because I just want to get those seam allowances the way I want them to go. So now I'm going to flip it over and see. See on the edges, they're not going all the way over yet. So we're going to now go from this side. I'm just going to pull it a little and that's going to help them get over there. So I'm going to go a couple times without the steam. Now I'm going to steam it a little. And that really sets it. So then I'm going to flip it over. You always want to make sure that it's looking straight because it is possible to make this curved one way or the other. If you're not sure, put a yardstick or your cutting plastic ruler. Make sure it's lined up. Very nice. Now the only thing we have to do to the border, we've got this cut five inches. It's the same as how big we cut our backgrounds there. I've got a whole width of the fabric and I'm just going to split it. And I am going to sew half of it on this end and half of it on this end. Then we will just cut off the excess. We will line it up in the middle with the middle of the quilt and cut off as much excess as we need. And that way it'll fit no matter what size patchwork you're doing. Now that the border's done, it's time for the cornerstones. They are really easy to make. We only need nine of these half square triangles. They're the scraps that we got from the flying geese. We only need nine of these for each cornerstone. So it's already been ironed flat. So we're just going to open it up, give it a quick pressing, and then I'm gonna snip off the dog ears. I think it's a little bit easier to do it now. So go ahead and open up nine of them and I'm pressing to the dark side on all of them pressing the seam allowances they're all going towards the dark side now since you only need nine you might not want to iron and trim all your squares because you're gonna get way more than you need from our scraps but this is how I'm gonna sew these together it's just a three by three so I'm gonna take these two and sew them together. And it helps if you use a scant quarter inch. Don't use a big quarter inch, use kind of a little quarter inch. Now I like to leave that on the machine and then grab the next two pieces in the sequence. So these ones go next. Leave it on the machine. Get the next two. Then we're just going to open them all up and sew the next row and everything will stay in order. So we're just going to open this up and add the next piece right here. Now to get the rows sewn together it helps if you alternate the way the seam allowances are going. So I'm going to press all of these ones that way, the middle ones that way, and the bottom row that way. So I'm just going to finger press it I'm not going to take it over to the machine, I mean to the ironing board. I'm just going to press it right here, now the middle row this way. And this makes everything lay really flat when you go to sew it together. And this row, that way. So there's that little patchwork, really fun. All we have to do is iron it now. Now we're going to make four of these. And I'm going to stitch the inner border onto the quilt. Then I'm going to do the flying geese border. I think I'll probably end with a green border. Then I'm going to get the whole thing put onto the long arm machine and quilt it up. And then I'll show you what it looks like. Here's the flying geese border on the quilt. Really a fun addition to any patchwork quilt. Now I have just a small section of flying geese, but you could make that wider if you like. The joy of doing just partial is that you can make it any length with your fill-in border here. The cornerstones here, just a nice little addition, a small detail makes a big difference in the finished quilt. We are going to have a package for sale that has pre-cut flying geese, but you can download the instructions we have on the website and cut your own. So a lot of fun on this Kansas Troubles. Really finishes any quilt very nicely.
Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time here at Jordan Fabrics. Thank <laughs> you.